that. All right? We recognize that this equation is currently in y equals mx plus b form, which is slope-intercept form, which is great sometimes, but it's not the one we want. So we're going to change it from y equals mx plus b into standard form. So we have to get the a, excuse me, the x and the y together on the same side. So that's going to be my first step. My first step is going to be get x and y together. So in order to get the x and the y together, I know some of you like to draw that line. In order to get them on the same side, I need to subtract the 4x from both sides. When I subtract the 4x from both sides, if you look carefully at these two, notice I didn't put the 4x underneath the y, right? Because they're not like terms. You can't add a 4x and a y together. So I have to leave them separate. Basically, all I did was shift the x from one side of the equation to the other by doing the inverse. <coughs> so now check out our standard form. Do I have the x and the y together on the same side? Yeah. yeah, I do have the x and the y together on the same side. Now I have to look at my other parts. Do I have all integers? Are all of these integers, negative 4, 1, and 5, are those all integers? Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's good. So I have all integers, no fractions. But now I have to check out, is A positive? Is the A positive? Nope. No. So I'm going to have to address the fact that A is not positive right now. And that's going to be my second thing. My second thing is going to be make A positive. And how do you make A positive? Here's how. So we subtract 5 from negative 4A, which would be... You add 4. Okay, not a bad guess. Really what you're going to end up doing is the same thing you would do on a smaller equation when you have like a negative Y together. You can either multiply or divide. I like to call it divide, but you're going to divide every single thing by the number negative 1. And if you're not sure why that's going to work, let's just check it out and see what happens. What is negative 4 divided by negative 1? Negative 4. Okay, it does give me... It gives me positive 4, and that's what I wanted, right? Was positive? Well, what about right here? What's positive 1 divided by negative 1? So that's negative 1y. I'm not going to put the 1, but it is negative 1y. And then 5 divided by negative 1? Negative 5. Negative 5. So look what happened. Effectively, by dividing by negative 1, every single one of these signs switched, right? But did I accomplish my goal? My goal was to make A positive. Is A positive? Yes. All right, A is positive. So that means I'm done. That is my answer in standard form. We're going to start off with the same thing. We need to get our x's and y's together, or we can go ahead and take care of the fraction. I think most of us realize that this fraction is a problem, isn't it? Okay? So we need to get rid of the fraction. How do you get rid of the fraction? Here's how you do it. You're going to... Oops, wrong thing. We're going to multiply by the LCD to clear fractions. Okay? A lot... So we're going to multiply by the LCD in this problem to clear fractions. Now you guys remember from several years ago what the LCD stands for. That's the least common denominator. It's easy on this problem because I only have one fraction, right? So there's only one denominator. What's the denominator? Four. four. So I'm going to multiply everything by four. Now on other problems, you might have more than one denominator. So that's why we mentioned the LCD. So I'm going to multiply both sides by four. First thing, I'm just going to rewrite. just so I have room to work. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. Now, when you multiply by 4, you have to recognize that you are actually multiplying everything on both sides by 4. Some people will only multiply by one thing, but it's actually everything, which means you've got a small distributive property problem. So, we'll check that out. 
We've got 4 times y right here. What's 4 times y? 4y. Four four y. Four y. And right here, we're going to have negative 3 fourths times 4. Now, you can use your calculator. It's fine. But if you'll remember, negative 3 fourths times 4 is really going to be negative 12 over 4. And what's negative 12 over 4? Negative 3, right? Hopefully, you guys will see a pattern there. You guys remember how those two cancel out? So, negative 3x. And then you also have 4 times 8, so that's plus 32. Now, take a moment to soak that in for a second. Okay, once we have the fractions cleared, now we need to go back to the same thing we did last time. We need to get x and y on the same side. So we're going to get the x and the y on the same side. What are we going to do with that? Let's see, we're going to... Plus 3x. Add the 3x to both sides. <coughs> and that's going to leave us with 3x plus 4y equals 32. Double check to see if we did everything we said we were going to. Are the x and the y together? Yes. Are a, b, and c constants with no fractions in it? Not constants, but um, integers with no fractions. That should say integers, not constants. And then is a positive? And A is positive. So we're done. So the first thing that we always take care of with point-slope form is to take care of this distributive property. So that's going to be the first thing I take care of. So we're going to distribute that. And you guys know how to distribute just fine. That's going to be... Y minus 4 equals, here's a good chance to practice those fractions we just did. That's negative 1 third X plus, and it is going to be 2 thirds. You can use your calculator to check, but remember, just as a review, 1 third times 2 is going to be 2 thirds, okay? Except these happen to be negative. All right, so our first step was distribute. No big deal. Now we're in a situation, bless you, where we actually have to look, um, we need to look at getting rid of our fractions. We definitely have more than one fraction now, right? Yeah. So, just like last time, we need to take care of our fractions. We need to multiply by the LCD. Now, in this case, what's the LCD? Oh, it's going to be a 3. Look, I have a 3 here and a 3 here. Both the denominators are the same. But if I multiply by the LCD, the both denominators, the fractions, will clear out. So I'm going to multiply everything by the LCD of 3. How do you get the LCD? By the LCD, it is a little bit of distributive property. What if it's not a fraction? So we multiply, that's going to be 3, 3y minus 12 equals, I've got 3 times negative 1 third x is going to be negative x, and 3 times 2 thirds is plus 2. Good. Notice though, I really like this, fractions gone, right? That was the whole point, fractions gone. Okay. Now I need to add that x to both sides, so I'm going to get the x and the y together. So if I add x to both sides, that leaves me with x plus 3y minus 12 equals 2. And get the constants on the other side. Some people like to just put these two steps together at the same time. I think it'll work out just fine for us if we do that. So I'm going to put the constants together. Can I add 12 to both sides and move this 12 over? Yes. Okay. And again, sometimes that just helps. So just to make things faster, that's going to give me 14. All right. So double check. 
do we have AX plus BY equals C? Yes. Okay, AX plus BY equals C. Can you tell me the A, the B, and the C? Uh, the A is 3Y. No, the A is the number in front of the X, which is 1. B is the number in front of the Y, which is 3. And the C is the constant on the other side. 14. So it's 14. And we'll use that information later, not right now. But we're done.